Hi, and welcome to What's the Buzz, the only show of its kind that spotlights the entertainment scene in Southern Maryland. I'm your host, James Lepore, and believe it or not, this is episode number 250. So I'll pretend to throw confetti, okay? How's that? <laughs> um, I'm here at the Long Beach Community Center in St. Leonard, Maryland, where New Direction Theater, new production, The Effect of Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon, Marigold. I know it's a mouthful, but we'll go over that in just a minute. Show dates for this amazing show are October 1st, 2nd, 8th, 9th at 7 p.m. and October 3rd at 2 p.m. My producer will put those things down at the bottom so you won't miss it. It's only two weekends, so you're going to want to get down here and, and see this. Uh, before I start speaking to the cast and director, let me just say, this is written by Paul Zindel, uh, who was a science teacher from Staten Island, New York, who wrote 56 books most of them considered to be autobiographical. He won a Pulitzer Prize for this show. Uh, it was on Off-Broadway in 1970, ran for 819 performances. Jeez, and I think 250 of my show is cool. I want to do 819. Um, it was a film in 1972 with Joanne Woodward um, as Beatrice, the mother. Uh, Paul Newman directed. Uh, Joanne won Best Actress at Cannes Film Festival for this role. Heather and I watched it last night. We loved it. Unfortunately, we loved it so much that it led to reading a whole day's worth of analysis, and, <laughs> and, then, and then you get this many questions to ask all of you. So, uh, first, let me uh, proud to introduce the director, Dee Dee Olney. Hello there. Can we go around and get the real name and character name? Sure. Dana Blaze, Nanny. Uh, Cassie Cornelius, Tilly. Amanda Conley, and I play Ruth. I'm Kate Harrison, and I'm Beatrice. I'm Logan Patton, and I'm the stage manager. I'm Sarah Slav, and I'm Janice. Hmm. Kate's the mean one. I see. I see. <laughs> um, Dee Dee, I am so used to coming up here and seeing you as a comedic actress, of which you are brilliant. Um, it, is this the first time you've directed here? No. Actually, my first um, production that I ever directed was actually five women wearing the same dress, which was back in 2013. I've done, let's see, probably what, about five or six shows that I've directed since then. Oh, oh, yeah. I had no idea. We've probably been to some, and I'm just not remembering, <laughs> yeah. but we always know we have a good time when we see you in the room. Uh, now, this is not a comedy, which I associate with you, mm -hmm. uh, but a rather heavy drama. Now, what attracted you to want to direct this show? I actually, the first time I actually had any experience with the show was my freshman year in high school. And I was actually the assistant director for our high school production of the show. And I fell in love with the show at that point in time. And so back in 2019, we were trying to decide, you know, what our season for 2020 was going to be. Um, and as the artistic director for the theater group, I was like, I would love to do Gamma Rays. It's just, it's such a wonderful show. It's so emotionally complex, and it's a roller coaster. And it's, yes, it's a drama, but it also has some wonderful comedic um, aspects to it as well that I just think it's a, it's a wonderful venue. It tells a timeless story. Unfortunately, it tells a timeless story um, of, you know, disappointment in your life and how you take that out on your children, and yet, the, you know, how even with that toxic environment, you still can grow and prosper. And still, you know, I just, I think it's a beautiful story. It is. It's and Sarah's over here going, I'm the comedic uh, relief. <laughs> and we but, have quite a few comedic relief moments. But we're not going to say why. Because, you know, <laughs> no. you know what, I want to spoil some, some yeah. fun. Um, the name of the, of the show. I mean, I think it throws everybody this the heck, but um, I don't think it's giving away any secrets to say that this is the name of Tilly's science fair project. Correct. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of symbolism mm -hmm. built into this too, which maybe we could touch on a little bit about the mother and the two girls. Um, but uh, um, okay, Dee, out of the out of the three characters, the, the mom mm -hmm. and the two girls, um, who finds is there is there one of them that finds any good in the world? Yes, and that would be Tilly. <laughs> and I think even Ruth finds good in the world. 
you know? I mean, Beatrice has been basically beaten down by life. And unfortunately, she takes it out on everyone around her. Um, but even, you know, Ruth and her insanity, and Tilly and her hopeful growth throughout the course of the show, she still, they both find ways to find um, beauty in the world. Listen to these answers. You'd think I've been prepping Dee all day <laughs> to answer these things. It's really, everybody should be this, this great in an interview. Um, now, Beatrice, played by Kate, I've got some few questions for you. You're on the hot seat here. <laughs> um, in your opinion, does Beatrice see any good in anyone? Um, I think she wants to in her daughters, mm -hmm. um, but has, again, has been so beaten down by the world that it's very hard for her to see it when it's in her face. So it takes some convincing from her daughters to be able to see the good in those bits. Um, but again, I think it's been a long time coming that she is just so worn down from life that it's it's hard for her to see the good. Well, how does she treat the kids? Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's a, a bit passive aggressive and not always the the kindest. Mm -hmm. I think she wanted to be the tender, loving kind of mother, and that's it's very hard for her. She had good role models growing up. Of, father who was wonderful to her, she wanted to model that for her <coughs> daughters, but I think life kind of got her down. So she, uh, it's not always the kindest, but I do think she does love her daughters very much. Mm -hmm. Although there is a statement in the show, and again I don't think it's giving anything away, where she mentions that having kids are like uh, having stones tied around your yeah. neck. So yeah. if that gives you any indication of her maternal <laughs> instinct there. Um, now, uh, you rent a room in the house, right, mm -hmm. for a little additional income, and yeah. you get an elderly woman, mm -hmm. uh, a young woman played by, <laughs> an elderly woman played by a young woman. Uh, how, did, how does, what's Beatrice's reaction when she comes in in a wheelchair? Are you using a wheelchair? Actually, we're using a walker. Okay, what's, what's Beatrice's reaction to this new person in the house? I think she's fairly used to it. This is something that she's been doing for extra money for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, she, I would assume, has been renting out the room for a few years. She does mention other, other patients that she has taken care of, but I think Nanny may be the last and the straw that breaks the camel's back, mm -hmm. so to say. I do believe one in the past is, is certainly... Uh, passed away and, and gave Ruth uh, a few emotional scars. A bit. I think uh, Beatrice looking for an extra income has definitely traumatized her daughters, which I don't think she was had originally thought of when she was taking people in, but that's, I think that's where that ends up. Clearly this is written before there was eBay and you had ways to make money. <laughs> and, you know, what can I say? Um, Beatrice, men, what's her view of men? This, I know, at least in the film, she interacts with several men. I'm not sure if, if I don't believe that's in that the stage script, That is not in the right? stage script, no. No. Okay. Um, well, like I said, she had a wonderful father that she adored and she really looked up to. And unfortunately, in her love life, it was not the same situation. Mm -hmm. So I think her idea of romantic style relationships, I think, is non-existent for okay. her. Where's the father? He is past. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Got it. Um, is she trying to improve her life? She has grand ideas, but you definitely start to realize that there are things that she will never follow through on. Mm -hmm. That she just doesn't have the function. I think she's a heavy drinker. I don't think she has the mentality or the ability to actually do those things, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, well, on the other on the other side of the coin, is she trying to improve the relationships uh, between her two daughters? Um, not to give anything away, but I think she wants to make the effort. Mm -hmm. She definitely favors certain daughters at certain times. But again, I won't give anything away. <laughs> is, is, would you would you classify her as a, an abusive mother? Yes. Yes. Mentally, definitely passive aggressive. Her children will definitely have issues longer in life. <laughs> Heather and I can give you a list of all the people we know that fit that bill. So. Um, and now it's time for Ruth and Tilly uh, questions. So, uh, I'm sorry, Amanda Connolly and Cassie Cornelius. So, I have questions for you two. Um, individually, how do you each view your mom? Um, Ruth kind of views her 
as a joke, mm -hmm. honestly. She um, she knows that, you know, I think for most of Ruth's life, her mother has made it clear that Ruth was the beginning of her downfall, mm -hmm. in a way. And I think Ruth has taken that to heart, and it's really affected her, and I don't think she really expects too much from her mother at this point. Hmm, guess we need answer that? She just kind of hopes and prays that like Beatrice one day will pull through. But she, I feel like deep down she's kind of un like understood that no, she's not. Do either one of you get any type of support or encouragement from your mother, or is that completely lacking in the moment? No, there there are definitely moments um, in the show where she does her maternal you know her maternal instinct does come through, and she you do see very you know very maternal moments from, from her, mm -hmm. where you don't expect, honestly. Um, but I think she does come through a couple points during the show, where you can see that you know, deep down she does want to try, mm -hmm. but she's so defeated. Is know? the communication easy between, you know, among the three of you, or is it strained and difficult? It's pretty strained, I think, yeah, definitely pretty strained. Hmm. Now, Tilly, I'm sorry, Cassie. <laughs> I made the mistake of writing down character names and like <laughs> calling everybody by their character name, which is not to take away from real names in, um, in, in, in any way. Um, how in the world does Tilly find hope and initiative living under the mother's rule? Um, really in school. That's her outlet. Mm -hmm. And it just, is that where she derives her strength from, is knowing that yeah. she can make something of herself using what she learns in science in school. Mm -hmm. right? She clearly favors science. Mm -hmm. um, Ruth, I understand that at some point during the show, your mother may have represented her social status in high school. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, can, is it safe to say that you maybe exploit that fact somewhere along the line? Uh, definitely. <laughs> I think definitely yes. Um, to a point where, you know, and I don't think Ruth ever means to do harm. I think that she tries to challenge Beatrice mm -hmm. a lot. Um, but I think at, at a couple points she does take it too far. And she does realize that, you know, her actions do have consequences. Mm -hmm. And people on the show do end up getting hurt because of that. What about outside people? Is she popular with neighbors or anybody else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She thinks she is. She thinks she is, absolutely. But right. she just, you know, she's definitely. This is one of those things where, like, everybody's laughing behind her back. Yes. And she thinks that she's, oh, Miss Social? Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Dee, um, what criteria did you use to cast these three ladies in these roles? Oh, wow. Um, actually, it was, it was range. You know, we, when we did auditions, we went through various aspects of the show to see what all they could bring to the characters. Mm -hmm. You know, the you know both the the sad parts, the angry parts, the funny parts. And they and all of the all of the actresses, all of them, even the non speaking roles, <laughs> um, <laughs> bring a real depth to each of the characters. None of the characters are flat or one dimensional. And so and that's what I was looking for in each and every one of them. And um, so, I mean, it has been a long time coming with the show. We mm -hmm. actually started rehearsal um, back in January of 2020. Oh, okay. We were supposed to do the show last June, mm -hmm. um, but because of COVID, we shut things down. Um, they all agreed to come That back. explains why we pulled into the parking lot. We're knocking on the door saying, we're here, we're here, and nobody answered. So. <laughs> started back up this summer and everybody has just been such a trooper and, and seeing their growth in the last year mm -hmm. um, has just been, it's been amazing. Yeah, like I said, long time coming. Yeah. Um, now, for the two girls and their mother, um, who would you, in your opinion, who is the, the real story being told through? Which character? Ooh, that's a hard one. Yeah. Like, 
think the hopeful side of the story is definitely coming from Tilly. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the family history and the not so lovely side of the family is coming from Beatrice. Um, and again, Beatrice never really goes anywhere or does much, so her only outside link to the world is through Ruth. So I think she really wants Ruth to be the popular girl and have all of those things. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think the majority of the story is definitely evenly divvied up between the different characters. And Beatrice is, kind of stays in the house all the time, Pretty right? much, yeah. I mean, I, I noticed from the set, the, uh, the mm -hmm. taped over windows is that to prevent Neighbors from looking in and seeing what's going on? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. Well, considering, now think about this, considering the dysfunctional relationship that is going on in this house, where do you see each of the characters, each of your own characters, in 10 years oh, from, from, this, from this story? Uh, we had this conversation yeah, yeah, multiple times. times. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, girls. That's all you. Well, so for, so unfortunately, yes, yeah, for Beatrice. She's long dead. She's She's been gone for, for a long time. What killed her? Well, alcohol, probably her own choices, mm -hmm. maybe even herself, but that I definitely don't see Beatrice being long. So you don't think long. the girls ganged up and yeah. oh, no, no. did you win? <laughs> no, no. Let's no, say, let's say think, it's I the alcohol. Beatrice we'll stick with the alcohol. Yes, yes. I like that. Um, the three of you, are these like some of the hardest roles that you've ever played? Yes, by far. Why is that? Definitely some dark subjects being mm -hmm. approached and things that I normally would never ever say mm -hmm. or do to anybody. I have to do to these beautiful girls mm -hmm. and I would, oh, it just, it breaks my heart. So it's definitely, it's been a struggle for me to Learn lots of lines and to definitely be as harsh to people that I care about. Is it? I mean, this is a pretty intense play. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do, do you find it hard to shake off the character when you when you walk out of here? What What does that feel like? Do you go home and yell at your kids? Oh God, no! Oh geez, no, <laughs> no. I do have two little boys, and that's I definitely struggle with with wondering. If that's somewhere I could be in the future, I know that's certainly not anything that I could ever have to worry about, but that's, you know, I feel horrible for families that do have to go through this, and I wonder mm -hmm. if that's something that I could protect my own family from. So. Well, it's good training for science fair. One of the boys can do the effects uh, yes, of uh, yeah. gamma rays that's on right. the moon. That's right. you can be our mentor in 10 years when we go to high school. Sure. <laughs> um, Dee Dee, wanted to ask you, as, as far as the gamma rays on man and moon marigolds, the, uh -huh. the name of the science fair project, I mean, obviously man and moon marigolds are flowers. As far as the gamma rays are, are concerned, and this was written in the early 60s, um, do you think this was really a reflection of American sphere of nuclear war, nuclear energy, and how it would possibly mutate um, the Earth's ecology? I, I believe so. I think it really, it's, it's a metaphor for the entire show, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you think about it in terms of the gamma rays and the effects and the mutations that you would, you know, potentially get from exposure, it's also describing the toxicity of their family. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the end, even the ones that have been exposed still grow. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the ones that don't get really closely exposed don't. But the ones, you know, there's still, there's still growth, there's still life, even in this, even in this toxic environment. So, with the science fair project, with the gamma rays exposure of the seed, like in the seeds, you know, some of the flowers grow better than others. Some are mutated, some are killed, and it's all about how closely they are exposed. It did strike me last night watching the movie. Mm -hmm. This, would you say it's? a fair assessment to say that this is also analogous to you and the daughters. I, I mean, I mean, Beatrice and, and the daughters, mm -hmm. as in yes. gamma rays, marigolds, Precise, yes. one turned out unexpectedly beautiful, and one turned out maybe a little mutated. A little damaged. So, sorry, sorry, man. No, no, it's, no true. it's true. And, that, and that's Character, true. I mean, Character, that's, not you. That's, no. exactly, that's exactly how I view the show. Mm -hmm. it's, the Science Fair Project is a metaphor for their family. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, and you still have hope. You still can grow even in this kind of toxic environment. And so, I don't want everybody to think it's always a downer. It's, it's, it's well, you know what? Let's talk yeah. about the comedic element yeah. and, and throw a throw a question 
and Sarah's way now. Uh, so I do believe that you, again, being careful not to reveal anything, um, your participation in the science fair is designed to be comedic relief before the heavy emotional climax. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Do you think that your character actually thought she would win the science fair over something? I think she was very, very hopeful that she was going to win. I think that she often just like blocks out the world and is so focused on her own thing and she's like, I am going to win. I don't care what anyone says, I'm going to win. That's how I see her. Oh, very cool. And then it, it's really, it's a big surprise, a big laugh, and, and look look forward to the science fair. It's, it's, it's absolutely great. Um, Nanny Annie, how great is it being in a show where you have all this visibility, and yet you don't have to learn one hand line? <laughs> <laughs> I, I certainly don't have to say any lines. Mm. Actually, there are some actions that I take that are based on Kate's line. Oh, so I have to know her lines in that particular scene. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, in terms of your character, uh, she's silent. Um, what do you think she is thinking as she's watching the, you know, the, the verbal gymnastics going on here with the, with the three ladies in the house? She's fairly oblivious. Oh, is she? Yes, she's mostly blind, mostly mm -hmm. deaf. Um, I, I believe she suffered a stroke as well. Hmm. Um, so she she's just kind of oblivious to most of it. She responds to loud noises. Okay. I spent the entire 1970s like that, so I, <laughs> I absolutely understand. Um, I can relate. <laughs> now, Dee, what's your opinion on people who want to bring their children? What is there an age cut off here? Or? What we have recommended is 13 and up. It does deal with some heavy topics. It is emotionally difficult at times. Mm -hmm. um, I leave it to parents' direct discretion, of course. But it, you know, it may be a bit much for the real younger. In terms of disturbing. To, disturbing. To, to um, to the some of the events that occur may be a little bit um, disturbing for for young children. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, obviously discretion of the parents. There's no. There's no, well, there's very little cursing. There's nothing that is overtly, you know, sexual or anything along those lines. But the subject matter is very difficult and can be at times intense and disturbing. Well, so. after we've described Beatrice so completely, I can understand why there's no sexual tension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? How about a question for our stage manager, okay? Um, how about a shout out to the crew and the people who run lights? Who's involved with this besides okay, you? Well, we have Justin who helped our, control our lights and helped kind of take them to this. We get the furthest we've had kind of thing, old light set up and mm -hmm. ramp that up. And then we have Rick doing our sound, and he's done a really good job with think, either recording things in the show or finding different things to make the whole show and hear it and stay together. When we have sound questions, we call Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've had a few of the parents come in and help, or friends just come and help build the set here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's about enough. Right? Now, this is not a, an established theater. This is the Long Beach Community Center. But as you can see, in a short period of time, this is transformed into a real set. And, you know, with seating and everything, it's really wonderful. But you don't really have a lot of time to set up the set, do you? No, we actually moved in on Sunday. Wow. So we actually built the entire set in about, let's see, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., so about 9, 10 hours. Mm. On Sunday, we built the set. We added a few pieces here and there since then. But Monday was our first day on the set rehearsing the show. Okay. Other than that, we do, you know, we, we do a lot of make-believe and pretend <laughs> during rehearsal in various locations. So, okay. But yeah, it's, it's beautifully tacky and distressed, I think. <laughs> well, we love it. We always have a great time whenever we're here. Um, considering the complexity of the play and how long you've been preparing, um, why just two weekends? It's just, it's really about the fact that, you know, we are a homeless theater. We had our own space, um, which we are working towards. We're working with the county commissioners trying to find, trying to develop a performing arts center in Calvert County mm -hmm. that we could base our, base our shows out of. We've been working with 
you know, Twin Beach players as well to kind of form a consortium to try to bring a community, a performing arts center for all the performing groups mm -hmm. in the county to Calvert County. Um, but because we, we don't, we have to rent space and it, that costs money and time and we have to fit into their schedule as well. So. But is, is the idea of your own performing theater, I mean, within the realm of possibility? Is it getting closer? I, I believe so. <laughs> I answers. believe so. We've got a couple of um, ideas that we've been working on. We've, you know, we were talking about um, transform transformation of the armory. That's a longer term potential project depending on what the county commissioners decide to do with it. There's some other locations that they have suggested that we've taken a look at and I think we make, would make um, really nice performance space. The armory sounds great, but I don't know if we should get the interest in any kind of fire armor. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, sound, doesn't sound like a, a good mix there. No, but, but that's our that's our end goal is to is to open that up and have a permanent home for our theater group. Is there anything that your audiences or viewers of this show or readers of MD Theater Guide um, is there anything that we can all do to help make that a make reality? That, yeah, what can yes. we do? Definitely, you can go to our website, which is ndctheater.org, and you will actually find a tab that says CAPA, that's Calvert Alliance for the Performing Arts, and go on that, it'll take you to a link, and you can go sign up on, sign up our petition, saying that we need Performing Arts Center in this county. Um, there's also options for donating to improve getting the word out with regard to CAPA, and also donating to actually towards a potential performing arts center. Please, so. these people work so hard. Get Hit that link. Mm -hmm. Do what you can to see this become a reality. And then the shows will be even bigger and better. And Well, I don't know if they could actually be better, yeah. but they'll be bigger. They'll be so. bigger. But and the, and the thing is about that, just a shout out to that as well, It's our goal is to make it a performing arts center for all mm -hmm. of the community groups in the county. There's oh. no good place for anyone to in this Ooh, you believe in shares these don't I you? do believe in sharing. We do, you know, we would, you know, obviously we want a home for ourselves, but we also want a home where folks can come in mm -hmm. and, and do their performances and share their share their art with the county. Very cool. Okay, so just remember, only two weekends, and let me go back to the, the dates, uh, October 1st, 2nd, 8th, 9th at 7 p.m. And then a matinee uh, on October 3rd, which I guess is a Sunday, right? Yes. At uh, 2 p.m. Um, you can get tickets from ndctheater.org. Tickets are cheap, $15 general admission, $12 for students and seniors, uh, $3 for talk show hosts. And <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 nice I, try, James. I, I, it's, it's, worth, it's worth the shot. I was, I was standing here anyway. Uh, the only rule is you do have to pre purchase tell me if I'm right, you, you do need to pre-purchase your tickets from the website. Right? Actually, you don't have to. Um, you can purchase tickets. Well, I'm just a liar. Don't listen to no, me. No, 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 no. <laughs> we do recommend that you pre-purchase your tickets. Um, we do have limited space in this facility. We um, have like 40, we have seats for like 45 people. Um, so the earlier you purchase your tickets, the better your seat is. Because we do it in the order that tickets are purchased online. So if you come to the door, you may wind up to be sitting, you know, behind two rows of seats. But you'll still be able to see. It just, you take your chance. Heather's motioning that we always seem to sit behind the six foot four guys. <laughs> so, yeah. But they're all very nice when we say, we can't see we through you. We all switch seats and they're usually very good about it. Right, but um, we don't have right seating, so it kind of becomes a little bit more difficult. But. Now, considering that we stepped on your dress rehearsal, Thank you so much for all being willing to spend these few minutes and, and talking about the show. I hope it brings you many, many, many patrons. Heather and I will be back to see an actual real show. Um, upcoming shows that we'll be covering on What's the Buzz will be probably next week being up in uh, Twin Beach Players in North Beach covering Frankenstein, which runs from October 15th to the 31st. Um, at the end of the month, we'll be talking to One on One with Chelsea Gray, who has the number six song on iTunes. Uh, it's called Walk Away, which is a duet with Craig Campbell for 99 cents. Great, great song. Uh, we'll also be uh, having shows with Robbie Booth, Justin Miles, David Norris. It just never ends. You know, and as soon as we finish with all those, theaters will be coming up with new shows. It just, it's a, it's a cycle. Um, 
I want to thank everybody for watching the show. Please like, comment, you know, do the YouTube things. Like, comment, share, um, send money, you know, any, anything you, <laughs> you want to do like that. It's also on Facebook, you know. Um, and uh, I want to thank our, our sponsor, Purple Post Real Estate. I'm, I, that's a company I work for. So if you want to work with me and you want to buy or sell something, just hit me up on the, on the page by message. And uh, I want to thank, as always, thank my wife and producer, Heather Lepore, who literally does everything. All I've got to do is stand up here and play the fool. Heather makes everything happen. And of course, we always thank our creative consultant, Reggie Rice. And that's about it. Um, on behalf of New Directions Theater and What's the Buzz, I want to say thank you for watching and take care.